Okay, nuclear reactors, here we go. In a nuclear reactor, a chain reaction is produced and controlled. Uranium-235 is the isotope used in many reactors. Explain how the fission of uranium-235 can lead to a chain reaction. Four marks. Okay. Let's start. So, explain how the fission of U-235 can lead to a chain reaction. So, standard approach, say the obvious, say what you know, put it in a logical order. So, let's start with when the uranium-235 nucleus absorbs a neutron, it causes the nucleus to split into two smaller nuclei. Okay? So, when U-235 absorbs a neutron, I'm going to do this in shorthand, I can't don't have enough space to write it out or, or time to write it out fully. When uranium-235 absorbs a neutron, it causes nucleus to split in two. That causes the nucleus to split into two smaller nuclei. Okay? You just saying what you know, and even if you think it's obvious, you do have to tell the examiner that, okay? So, it also releases, releases two or three neutrons, okay? This is fission. It splits a nucleus in two, and two or three neutrons released at the same time. Right. If one of these neutrons is absorbed by a nearby uranium nucleus, it will also split into two. Okay, so if one of these neutrons is absorbed it's absorption is P, absorbed is B, isn't it? Right, I can't spell today. Okay, if one of these neutrons is absorbed by a nucleus, maybe a nearby nucleus, then it also splits and releases two or three more neutrons. Okay? The whole process repeats, and this is a chain reaction, and that is it. That'll get you the four marks, okay? Good, right. Okay, pretty straightforward, I, I hope. Okay, part two. The beryllium-9 nuclei do not absorb neutrons. Instead, they absorb alpha particles and emit neutrons, okay? So you've got beryllium-9. It absorbs an alpha particle, but it em emits neutrons, okay? Give a reason why a chain reaction can result from the emission of neutrons by uranium nuclei, but not by beryllium nuclei. So only one mark. Okay. <clears throat> well, a chain reaction could never happen with beryllium-9 because it's triggered by absorption of an alpha particle. So when the beryllium nucleus splits, it releases neutrons. And neutrons do not trigger splitting of beryllium atoms. So it comes down to the fact that the, the thing that causes the split is different to the thing that's released during the split. So a chain reaction could never take place. So for one mark, how would you, what do you write in the exam? You've just got to say all that as quickly as you can. So the, the particle that triggers 
splitting of beryllium 9 is different to the particle released. Therefore, you can you could never have a chain reaction. Good. Okay. <clears throat> Next question. Explain what happens inside a nuclear reactor if neutron speeds are not controlled. Three marks. Okay. It's slightly counterintuitive, this one. Okay. Let me just explain what's going on. When a uranium nucleus splits, undergoes fission, and, rele and releases the two or three neutrons. Those two or three neutrons are moving very, very fast, okay? And I say it's counterintuitive because you'd think that a fast-moving neutron would be good at colliding into a nearby nucleus and causing it to split and to, <clears throat> to start the chain reaction. But that's not the case. It turns out that actually much slower moving neutrons, these so-called thermal neutrons, are better at being absorbed by uranium nuclei and causing fission. So, so nuclear reactors have something in them called a neutron moderator, which is usually just water or graphite, to slow the neutrons down and turn them into so-called thermal neutrons. Thermal neutrons are the slow neutrons. So this question is asking, what happens in a nuclear reactor if the speeds are not controlled? Well, if they're not controlled, they remain very fast and they don't cause fission. So if they're not controlled, reaction rates, fission rates reduce. Okay? So that's the answer. What are we going to write to extract our three marks? Okay. Well, start by saying that neutrons that are the product of fission are very fast moving. So neutrons that are the product of fission are very fast. Okay, first thing, just get your knowledge down, say what you know. Right, then say slower or so-called thermal neutrons are much better at causing fission. Okay? Right, then we'll mention the moderator. So therefore, neutron moderators are used to slow the neutrons. And ne neutron moderators are usually just water or graphite. Okay? So well on our way to three marks, if not got all three already. Okay, I'll just actually answer the question. So therefore, if neutron speeds not controlled, then the reaction or the fission rates decrease. Which, like I say, is counterintuitive. You'd think faster neutrons would cause fission, but turns out you need these slow thermal neutrons. Good, three marks in the bag. Let's move on. Okay, final question. Describe how the energy released in the chain reaction in a nuclear reactor is used to drive a turbine in a nuclear power station. Three marks. Okay. Let's go. Right, describe how the energy release in the chain reaction in a nuclear reactor is used to drive a turbine. Right, well in a nuclear reactor, the reason we do fission is because it releases energy in the form of heat. Okay, so how are we going to say that? Yeah, just say nuclear fission releases 
heat, heat energy. Okay. What next? Right. Nuclear reactors are surrounded by a coolant. Cool, coolant is sent in and the fission reaction heats it up and it's, it goes out much hotter. <clears throat> so, um, what should we say? Yeah, this heat um, heats the coolant surrounding the reactor. Good, nearly there. Okay. This is used to boil water and turn it into steam. Okay. So a nuclear power station, it's like a it's like a giant kettle, if you like. The objective is just to boil water and turn it into steam. And this steam is sent at high pressure into the turbine, which drives the turbine round. Boom, full marks in the bag. Excellent. There we go. Okay, so another question that involves using a lot of exam technique, you have to write down what might seem like obvious things to you, but even if you don't get a mark for them, say something, say something if you know it, if it seems obvious. It does, it's not going to, they're not going to take marks off if you say something's not relevant. Get as much down as you know on the paper, okay? Say things you think might be obvious, you'll probably get a mark for it. S say what you know, get everything down that you know, use your knowledge. Show, even if you're not quite sure whether you're answering the question directly or not, just get your knowledge down on the paper if you think you still need to write more. And try and put it in a logical order, okay? The order of events this, therefore that, therefore that. Yeah, there you go.